Hello viewers, welcome to Roving Report, a program that gives an overview of the developments in India's northeast region. I'm your host Chandrakala and the highlights of today's program are Silent Rally held to oppose Ban culture in Manipur Indian Super League 2016 commences with fanfare in Guwahati People across Northeast gear up to welcome Goddess Durga in a devotional manner. And flute concert mesmerizes audiences in Northeast. Well, viewers, Manipur is known as the jewel of India. But frequent strikes and bans have been causing major damage to the state's economy and livelihood of the common people. Concern over the prevailing situation, the people in Imphal city carried out a silent rally to oppose the Ban culture. We bring you a report. Violent protests and strikes carried out frequently by various organizations and groups in Manipur affect one and all. The economy, education and health services take a back seat during these man-made hurdles. Recently, over 700 people comprising students, transporters, entrepreneurs and women vendors participated in a rally to oppose the Bandh culture in the state. It's high time that we take this matter up and show the public that how many people are actually, uh, you, you know, like uh, uh, trying to portray that uh, the losses of the state and for the people, for our future generations, uh, what this Bandh is causing. So that's why we have come out. Uh, uh, we are, uh, th this uh, organization is uh, represented by like-minded citizens of Manipur who thinks that uh, we need to find alternative ways uh, to protest other than calling ban. All through these years, the residents of Manipur have been silently suffering the bans, blockades and public curfews. Therefore, it is important that the people come together and work towards bringing normalcy back in Manipur. During the rally, play cards reading, save our future. Bans are expensive, peaceful protests are priceless. No more bans together against buns were displayed. This, I uh, mean, I think it's important for each and every one. I mean, whether it's uh, Manipur is living in Manipur right now or if they're outside, everybody is directly or indirectly affected by this, yeah? Daily wage earners or budding entrepreneurs, everybody is affected. Even housewives are affected by buns, you know, even if you're not working. So it's, it is, it is a very, very important uh, thing for especially if we want towards to move towards development, you know. Such collective responsibility taken by the people of Manipur shows the urge for peace and development in the state. The opposition to buns and strikes is a step towards a better future in the northeast region. The city of Guwahati came alive with the onset of the country's biggest ever football extravaganza, Indian Super League 2016. Indira Gandhi Athletic Stadium was soaked in celebration of cultural diversities and true spirit of eight states of the Northeast as it hosted the inaugural match. A report. Let's football. The entire country is in the grip of football frenzy, especially the Northeast India since Hero Indian Super League 2016 kicked off. The third season of the Super League was launched at Indira Gandhi Athletic Stadium in Guwahati with the opening match between Northeast United Football Club and Kerala Blasters. Northeast is an emerging power hub of football, producing a huge pool of talented players every year. Northeast United Football Club, owned by Bollywood actor John Ibrahim, has been a huge platform for the young players so far. It was wonderful to be here in Guwahati today. Well, we need more and more youngsters and youths to play sports. We need more grassroots level sports in the Northeast so that more children get into sports and play sports. And Northeast, as I said, is the epicenter for sports in India. We have such great sporting stars that have come out out of Northeast. So it'll be wonderful. With every match, we want more support. जीते हारे जो भी आज हम लोग जीते कल ड्रॉ भी हो सकता है पर सो हार नहीं सकते लेकिन ग्वाडी फैंस का सपोर्ट हमारे लिए बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है तो वो सपोर्ट करेंगे हम लोग डेफिनेटली जीतेंगे सिक्योरिटी वाज बिफ्ट अप अक्रॉस द सिटी विद द अराइवल ऑफ बॉलीवुड स्टार्स टू विटनेस द बिगेस्ट फुटबॉल एक्स्ट्रा वेगेंजा इन द सिटी 
Abhishek Bachchan was among others who turned up to support the Northeast region's passion for the sport. I thought the opening ceremony was brilliant, it was beautiful, a great way to start the ISL season. I wish all the teams all the very best. Uh, congratulations to John and Northeast United and my commiserations to uh, Sachin and Kerala. It's just the first match, so there's a long way to go. And, uh, but judging by the first match, I think we have a very exciting season ahead. Enthusiastic fans from across the country throng the stadium to cheer up and support young players from various teams. The opening ceremony saw the glitz and glamour with Bollywood stars Alia Bhatt, Jacqueline Fernandez and Varun Dhawan setting the stage on fire with performances on some of their most popular tracks. बस बहुत खूबसूरत है यहाँ के लोग बहुत खूबसूरत हैं जिस तरीके का वेलकम हमें मिला है राइट फ्रॉम द एयरपोर्ट टिल यो एंड हर जगह जो मिल रहा है बहुत प्यार दे रहा है एंड मुझे खाली इस बात का बुरा लग रहा है कि मैं आसाम पहले क्यों नहीं आया मुझे बहुत जल्दी आ जाना चाहिए था Any UFC prevail over Kerala Blasters in the inaugural match Bollywood celebrities were also joined by MS Dhoni and Sachin Tendulkar representing their respective teams This edition of ISL is featuring 8 teams including Kerala Blasters, Goa FC, NUFC, Delhi Dynamos, FC Pune City, Mumbai City FC. Such an endeavor will go a long way in inculcating a sense of competition among the youth of the northeast and exhort them to excel in the national arena as well. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the northeast recently. Recently, Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Pema Khandu met Union Minister of State with independent charge for power, coal, new and renewable energy and mines Piyush Goyal in New Delhi. Goyal urged the state government to initiate a result-oriented approach to ensure that the power sector, which has huge potential in Arunachal Pradesh, sees a major boost in the days to come. Khandu also recommended for consideration a proposal for 89 megawatt solar parks at Tezu. Apart from power issues, Khandu requested the Union Ministry to consider reopening of the Namchik Namphu coal field, which has been a major source of revenue generation for the state. Goyal assured Khandu of all possible support from the ministry and informed that the Union government is committed to electrify every household by 2018. while all villages will be illuminated by march 2017 china's move to block a tributary of the brahmaputra as part of its major hydroelectric project has invited criticism from several quarters commenting on the controversy of china's decision to block brahmaputra tributary chief minister of arunachal pradesh pema khandu said this matter is pertaining to international level in which the external ministry will be tackling it and i have full faith on the government of india will tackle it wisely it will be very unfortunate for the the north east states in india and also particularly burma and in bangladesh so i hope is not true because water sharing is important and people in downstream deserve to have water uh and tibet being the source of brahmaputra river We have shared our water with all the neighboring countries uh, for free, respecting uh, we all are human being, and I hope the Chinese government will do the same. Anil Madhav Dave, Union Minister of State, Independent Charge for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, recently visited the Lok Tak Lake and Cable Lamjao National Park in Manipur during a two-day visit to the state. Kebul Lamjao is the only home of the endangered brow antler deer Sangai. The way was warmly received by the residents of Sangram village located near the Kebul Lamjao National Park who held welcoming placards. Before heading for Lok Tak Lake and Kebul Lamjao, the minister also planted tree saplings inside Kangla. Spread across an area of around 40 square kilometers, Kebul Lamjao is known around the world for its unique composition. as it is made up of biomass vegetation which floats on the surface of the lake recently the 11 airmen selection center guwahati conducted a recruitment rally for group x technical and group y non technical at dera natung government college itanagar for the districts of tawang west kaming east kaming 
Papumpare, West Siang and Tezu. The qualification for Group X, according to Government of India norms, is 12 pass or equivalent with Maths, Physics and English with minimum 50% marks or 3 years diploma in Engineering. For Group Y, candidates need to be 10 plus 12 passed or equivalent with any stream. More rallies are likely to be organized in Mizoram, Tripura and other states in the region to motivate more youths to join the Air Force. A torch rally was brought out in Agartala to celebrate and show their support to the Indian Army and the Government of India for launching surgical strikes on terror launch pads or camps used to facilitate infiltration of terrorists across the border in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently. Numerous people, including women, took part in the rally as they raised slogans praising the Army and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. S. Sundarlal, a retired IAS officer, was recently sworn in as the first chairman of Manipur Municipality Property Tax. The ceremony was held at the Darbar Hall of Raj Bhavan in the presence of Manipur Governor Dr. Najma Heptullah. Property tax is one of the main sources of revenue for the urban local body, residential and non-residential properties situated within the limits of ULB are assessed for tax. Based on such assessments, taxes are levied on the property owners. The revenue section of the ULB or municipal body is responsible for administration of property taxation for that respective ULB. Property tax is assessed for each property located in the limits of the ULB based on the annual rental value and the taxation rate. Seventeen-year-old Nabam Yate of Papumpare was crowned Miss Capital 2016 at the grand finale of the second annual beauty pageant organized at Nyokum Lapang Ground in Itanagar. Heri Sonu and Pooja Talang won the first and second runner's titles, respectively. Organized jointly by the Classic Friendship Club and Rural Development Society, as many as 18 finalists contested for the title at the grand finale. The crowned Miss was awarded a Renault Quid car along with a five days and four night Bangkok Pattaya tour. Ensconced in the beautiful hillock and surrounded by trees, flowers, and fences along the road, Mapao Zingshou village in Manipur was perfect to host the World Tourism Day. Declared as the state's cleanest village, Mapao Zingshou has a rich history. Have a look. Emerging as a future destination of tourism in Manipur, Mapao Zingshu village was the perfect host of the World Tourism Day. Organized by Manipur Tourism Department, the event was created by Chief Minister of Manipur, Okram Ipobi Singh, in the presence of other state ministers and village officials. Celebrated under the worldwide tourism team, Tourism for All, promoting universal accessibility, people from across the state witnessed the extravagant cultural event. On the occasion, a homestay was also inaugurated by the chief minister in the village. The concept was highly appreciated by the people. The village has been chosen to observe and celebrate this World Tourism Day, being one of the cleanest village in Manipur, as well as one among the cleanest village in Northeast, and it got the award from Rural Development Ministry and uh, the people are uh, well behaved and they do have the concept of to encourage the homestay for the tourists within India, within Manipur as well as foreigners. Presentation of traumatized version of Otre Kapung, an almost extinct custom of carrying harvested batty on the back to the village, and Dunkul Fog Tans and other entertainment programs were the highlights of the one day festival. Traditional wares and cultural items were also displayed, apart from local cuisines being sold at the newly erected thatched roof stalls. Besides maintaining sanitation, the village also conserves forests and tree plantations are carried out throughout the year. As yam nungai ba hai bati ashi kumbai koi ki kun masa ashi dash mai na taubi bishe ek koi dam yam harau ba nungai ba hai bdo atu yam wakanda ek koi loi nung wakanda tum yau sai. Mm -hmm. 
Asidagi hen apa jawab sih? Kau nasi ayam na, tuh aku ini kena tulen lagi. Kau kan tahu sih? Aku village itu mak dah hari yang na life of apa mana tuh hari ni? Ada kau sih kau bertanya apa ibu sih yang na nongai je na hari ni? Tourism deh sih kau pang tu boleh ni na aku ikut sih hen na cakap na apa? Ada hen na apa perak na apa na? Aku na kau nasi ni. These recognitions are inspiring and motivation factors for other potential tourism villages. It also gives the platform to the youngsters to come up with novel ideas and innovations. Well, preparations are in full swing in India's northeastern region for Durga Puja festival that is celebrated across the country in honor of Goddess Durga. It is believed that Goddess Durga emerged from the collective energy of all gods as an embodiment of Shakti or divine feminine power to destroy the demon Mahishasura. Have a look. Along with the entire country, northeastern province of Tripura and Assam's Guwahati city too are gripped in Durga Puja fervor. The festival is celebrated to mark the victory of Goddess Durga over the demon Mahishasura. Durga Puja festival epitomizes the victory of good over evil. In Tripura's capital city Agartala, sculptors are busy preparing beautiful idols of Maa Durga adorned with various themes. Decorative pandals are being erected across the state where giant idols of Goddess Durga would be installed. For Bengali-speaking people in Tripura, Durga Puja is the biggest celebration of the year. Women and children eagerly wait for the first day of Durga Puja. Markets are inundated with various attractive items prepared from various decorative beads. Artificial flowers are also in great demand for those who wish to decorate their houses with such items, especially during Lakshmi Puja or Diwali. <laughs> Amit's high security Assam's Guwahati city too is soaked in festive mood with decorative marquees being set up in various parts of the city. Highlighting various themes of human interest, social issues, this year various puja committees are focusing on representing unique pandal premise to attract more crowds. इस बार हमने पंडाल की जो डिजाइन ली है वो कंसेप्ट स्पेशली हम लोग जो पुराने मंदिर है भारत की या फिर यहाँ की दूसरे देशों की हो तो सभी कंट्री में कंट्री का जो मंदिर है स्पेशली जो ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन के पहले वक्त की तो उस हिसाब से हम लोग को पुराने जो रॉक कार्विंग का कास काम होता था पहले जमाने में तो उस पर हम लोग आधारित ये काम किए हैं The sculptors are working overnight to give shape to idols of Goddess Durga, paint and make them ready for the occasion. हम क्रिस्टल से बनाता है, हम ऐसा बनाया है, 25 मूर्ति बनाया है, 25 मूर्ति ऐसा अच्छा है, मार्केट अच्छा है, पूजा भी अच्छा है, पूजा भी अच्छा होगा। हम लोग शुरू करता है, छह महीना पहले से शुरू करता है। the six days of the festival are observed as Mahalaya, Shashti, Mahasaptami, Mahashtami, Mahanavmi and Vijay Dashami in eastern most part of the India. Well, peace and development is a buzzword in the northeast. Let's take a quick look at some development news from the region. Union Minister of Consumer Affairs in Food and Public Distribution Ramvilas Paswan announced setting up of a national consumer helpline for northeast region. The minister, who was in Shillong to chair the Hindi Salaka Samiti meeting, said out of the six places, the central government will install a national consumer helpline in Guwahati, Assam, for the benefits of the consumers of the region. So far, 49 such helplines have been set up across the country, enabling consumers to file their complaints from anywhere, including mobile phones. Recently, Mizoram Chief Minister Lal Thanhaula launched a new economic development policy to boost the state's agriculture-based economy 
develop rural infrastructure and to raise living standards of the people. Their new policy will facilitate private-public partnerships and add value to various agricultural, horticultural and other products. It also aims to establish additional classrooms in higher secondary and model schools to meet the growing demand for admission into government-run higher secondary schools. Mizoram Home Minister R. Lal Zemliana also launched the Traffic Jam Free Aizol City program, which will strive to decongest roads and control traffic to ensure better movement of vehicles on the roads of the city. The Deepupa Naga Students Union or DNSU organized a seminar on tobacco awareness at Agri Expo, fourth mile on the theme Tobacco, an agent of mass destruction. Speaking as a resource person, Dr. C. Tetsio, Nodal Officer, National Tobacco Control Program, said a large number of deaths are attributed to tobacco consumption. He also stressed upon the importance of spreading awareness about the destructive role of tobacco. Nagaland has the second highest tobacco users in India, with the whopping 57% of population consuming tobacco. Meghalaya government has rolled out a scheme to provide quality education to children for a better future. To improve the literacy rate and control the rate of students dropping out, a novel idea called Education Emergency has been launched in the state recently. Here's a report. Years of militancy have left the economy in Meghalaya in bad shape. One of the worst affected sectors is education. However, with the decline in militancy in recent years, the government has turned its focus on improving the current condition of education. Education Minister Debora Marak launched the Education Emergency Scheme on her visit to Garo Hills District. The government hopes such an initiative will once again attract dropouts and improve the literacy rate of the state. This primary education, why this thing happening, I think it is, uh, it is happening uh, mainly in the uh, rural areas. Now we have to improve uh, this system uh, in the uh, rural area, this primary education. The minister also visited many other schools including Rongrenga Higher Secondary School, William Nagar, St. George Mission School and KG BV Samanda in East Garo Hills. Marak interacted with students and had consultations with officials at the schools. After interactions with various school administrations, Marak acknowledged the many bottlenecks in implementation of education programs and schemes including midday meal. It's a uh, challenging uh, job uh, for me. Uh, lots of work uh, to do uh, for me uh, and lots of uh, work uh, ahead for me. I had a, a departmental uh, meeting. We had a very, very uh, fruitful discussion uh, with our officials. And today, uh, I had an opportunity to visit many schools. We need to work hard. We need to improve the system. The special attention by the government will help bring more and more children to classrooms and help build a better future for them. Well, art, culture and music is all that defines the true essence and uniqueness of northeastern India. A unique flute festival was recently organized in Meghalaya and Manipur under the initiative of the Indian Council of Cultural Relations to spread the message of peace. Take a look. A renowned flutist from Italy joined other players from Manipur and Delhi at the recently concluded flute concert at Maharaja Chandrakriti Auditorium in Manipur to spread the message of peace. The first of its kind flute concert was organized in Manipur under the banner of ICCR Regional Office, Shillong, in collaboration with Department of Art and Culture, Government of Manipur, to commemorate International Day of Peace. A unique blend and style of flute music was presented by the performers, leaving the audiences spellbound, thereby creating an atmosphere of peace and tranquility through the medium of music. Flawless performance by New Delhi-based flute player Chetan Joshi engrossed with the terrific combination of Indian classical music left the crowd awestruck.
विश्व में दो ही तरह के संगीत होते हैं सिर्फ दो तरह का संगीत होता है वर्ल्ड में एक होता है अच्छा संगीत और एक होता है बुरा संगीत जो अच्छा है वो हर जगह अच्छा है जो बुरा है वो हर जगह बुरा है तो हम संगीतकारों में ऐसा कोई बैरियर नहीं होता है कि किसका संगीत और कहीं का भी संगीत हो अगर अच्छा है तो हमको अच्छा लगता है हम उसको अडॉप्ट करते हैं अभी हम लोग दिल्ली में हम लोगों ने बजाया वहाँ बहुत अच्छा कार्यक्रम रहा वहाँ पे तो वहाँ पे भी जब मैं बजा रहा था मेरे बाद लातविया से एक टीम थी सेक्सोफोन क्वार्टेट था उन लोगों ने बजाया उसी तरह से यहाँ पे इटली के आर्केडियो बजा रहे हैं हमारे साथ तो ये एक एक दूसरे से संगीत में मेल मिलाप की बात है और देखिए मिलना जब भी होता है तो दिल से मिलना होता है दिमाग से नहीं मिलते हैं लोग दिमाग से खाली परिचय होता है इंट्रोडक्शन होता है मिलना होता है दिल से तो हम लोग संगीत के माध्यम से दिल से मिल रहे हैं गवर्नर ऑफ मणिपुर नजमा हेप्टुल्ला who was present as the chief guest of the evening stressed the importance of developing and nurturing the rich cultural heritage passed on to us by our ancestors eminent flutists of manipur l braj kumar and g loken sharma also performed at the concert however renowned flute player from italy arcadio baraki showcased a mystical flute performance delivering a strong message of peace and unity There's different uh, type of uh, flute and music and stylist. I have decided uh, when I was in Rasarang Festival in New Delhi to listen to play, sorry, uh, some piece of contemporary Italian music uh, and it's so hard, so strong. <laughs> and tonight I decide to make some of this and other piece of uh, classical music, Bach, Paganini and other. On a similar note, large number of people in Meghalaya flocked to the concert to witness and enjoy the spiritual music of the wind instrument. Benedict Hainuta from Meghalaya showcased a unique combination of modern flute music accompanied by other instruments. Music binds people together irrespective of their caste and creed, thereby building a strong cultural relation with each other. Such events will help revive the oldest musical instrument which is slowly losing its sheen today. Well viewers with that we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia_ani. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the northeast. I'm your host Chandrakala signing off. Goodbye and take care.